Hello guys, this is Satvik and in this video we will be discussing about the 2FA bypassing techniques. So without getting any delay, let's dive into the video. Guys, first of all, really, really thank you for all your support. If you want to connect with me personally, you can check out my Twitter and if you want to be part of this channel's community, you can check out my Discord server. All the relevant links are in the description below. So this video will be discussing as a two-factor authentication uh, bypassing technique. So where you can implement is like whenever you're doing some sort of a bug bounty or some sort of thing, like you can try to check for these sort of stuff. And uh, if the luck persists, like you can definitely go and like you can bypass the two-factor authentication and you can report uh, to the relevant authorities and you can get your bounty or hall of fame or whatever it is. And also guys, this video is strictly for the educational purpose. Okay, so I'll be showing you most of this is going to be a theory part. And in the next video, if possible, I'll try to show this in the live demo. Okay, on some uh, normal applications. And also like this is like uh, you cannot expect uh, since it's a uh, bug bounty, right? You cannot expect uh, working of this uh, two factor authentication in all the applications. So if the applications are not configured properly, then you can see these sort of bypassing techniques working fine. And don't expect that every website in the world can be bypassed. Uh, the two-factor authentication can be bypassed through this stuff. So, and also guys, like for uh, the, uh, for what you say, like in order to practice, so there is a ports figure lab for the multi-factor authentication. So one thing that is really useful for us is this uh, brute force attack. So we'll be discussing one by one. And also this uh, by, bypassing 2FA, I did my own research and I gone through some few reports on the hacker one buck, uh, buck crowd and some sort of stuff. And I collected some sort of stuff. So I'll be showing you. So the first one, so let's start with, uh, uh, let's start with what you say, uh, brute forcing. So brute forcing in the sense, like whenever you logged in, right? Let's assume you got like valid credentials. So, but before that, let me explain you what the two-factor authentication is for like uh, new people. So like it is like one more step for the authentication. Like for example, take Instagram. So if you take Instagram, so IG in the sense like Instagram. So you log in basically with the help of username. Okay. And as well as the password. Okay. But uh, in order to enhance the security, you, uh, you can, uh, what you say, enable an option called as two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication or whatever it is. In two-factor authentication, what happens is like when you enter the username and the password, so you will be getting some sort of a code. So this code can be from authenticator app. Okay. So authenticator apps, like you can find it, like Google has one authenticator app. Microsoft has one authenticator app. So these has like codes, which run for like 60 seconds time. And after this, um, particular amount of time, a new code will be generated. Okay. And there is via something, a favorite one is SMS. So, uh, by these two and also there's something called as backup code okay so these are some codes okay two-factor authentication codes how uh, basically you see these sort of stuff uh okay so this is how the two-factor authentication is so now coming to the important part the brute forcing so you can uh if in order to get to the two-factor authentication you need to have a valid credentials like you can create a dummy account uh with some sort of like normal gmail and you can just do uh, get an initial access and what you can do is like so you get a 2, 2fa page here so in the 2fa page so 2fa in the sense like it's a code right so you get like six digit or uh, uh, or some uh, x digit code you can simply brute force it okay with the help of something called as like uh, a burp suit okay burp suit intruder to be precise Okay, like you can collect that uh, request and I can just send to the intruder and like you can, uh, what you say, like keep on sending the request. Okay, so if, if the website is not having rate limiting, okay, if there is no rate limiting for the websites, then you can successfully bypass it, uh, you can successfully bypass the authentication and uh, the relevant, uh, the, what you say, the theory behind this is like, I read a report where one person was able to hack Instagram accounts like, uh, because there is no uh, rate limiting on the uh, two-factor authentication page. So that is how it happened. So that is one thing. So brute forcing will work. But remember, like if there is a rate limiting policy implemented, then uh, you need to work fine. You, you can do some sort of IB rotating. You can add some sort of like uh, headers and sort of stuff, like try to bypass that rate limiting. Okay. So if it works, like you'll be really lucky enough. 
and that is one thing and the one thing is the response manipulation so most of the time uh, uh, what happens in the sense like whether it can be otp bypass or 2fa bypass like if there is no improper uh, server validations you can see this sort of bug coming okay so you play with something called as responses so you have in the burp suit in the burp suit and in the proxy section like you can always look for the responses like you can do right click and you can click on do intercept the responses okay so do intercept the responses and sort of stuff so like i'm not getting anything because uh, the intercept is uh, i'm not i haven't got any rest, uh, request here so that is one thing so uh, what happens in the sense like you can uh, spy on this responses okay so the first one how you can do is like i noted down this okay so i'll try to mention these all this stuff on my discord or on my twitter so i just post the stuff uh, all these notes on my twitter or discord so make sure you're part of them okay so the first one is like give some dummy code okay uh, and uh, you get responses right so in the responses you can see something like positive like success error uh, like true or false based stuff so you can try to change those responses okay like uh, for example if it is showing as like success equal to false like try to change the response to success equal to true like that depends okay that depends like you can go and ch uh, change that and sometimes if the server validations are not done properly then you can definitely bypass it but if it is being done properly then you won't have like good luck over here okay so that is what uh, this is all about uh, or what you can do one more thing that you can do is like since you are working on your own account right so uh, in the first attempt uh, give a valid code okay give a valid code and uh, copy the uh, response that you are getting for a valid code now in the second attempt okay uh, give some invalid code okay uh, invalid code and like since it's an invalid code right you will definitely be getting some sort of like error response so just copy uh, just paste the previously uh, copied response of the valid code uh, sometimes you can just bypass it okay simply so uh, recently i reported one bug in which this is how it happened okay so like i was able when i was trying to change the responses to the true or sort of stuff so it, it was not happening but uh, I just generated a co valid code and I got a response. I copied that and I just pasted it for the valid uh, invalid code and I just got into the system. So that is one thing and I didn't got any response from them. But uh, if, if, if everything goes fine, I'll just uh, show you that in live. Okay. So that is one thing and uh, like response manipulation when it works is like if the improper server validations are being done. So if the validating like most of the time what they happen in the sense like so because of this improper server validations like you will be uh, able to play with these responses and you can get a lot of stuff so in the previous video like where i shown you how to bypass an otp so there also because of the improper server validations it is being getting done and the third thing is like status code manipulation so status code in the sense like for example if you give an invalid code you can get something like four uh four series response code like 401 402 something some sort of stuff like you can change those responses and see whether if it works or not okay like it's always for checking okay so sometimes what happens in the sense like i read a report in which uh the response or the code okay the code uh the response code that i'm getting it, it consists of the valid code so like going through that code may always be helpful for you and sometimes like if you find some sort of like javascript file set on the server when you're doing it so sometimes you may get the logic of how the uh, code is getting generated like most of the time they use a the standard uh stuff to generate the code but sometimes some developers use their own stuff so like you can analyze the code and you can get come to some conclusions okay so that is it so like you can use the same uh one more thing is like you can you can create two users and you can check okay so user a code is being used for the user b or some sort of stuff like because like every user logging at that particular time gets the same code so even this is also a vulnerability like you can check that out if it works fine or not and the coming one is a csrf so these are some stuff and this social engineering and all these stuffs are like uh not much useful okay because like most of the platforms uh this bug bounty platform that doesn't encourage social engineering so this is not going to be useful for you uh so coming to this point so csrf so you all know that uh 
I already made a video. So without even the user's consent, like when he opens some link, some background script gets loaded or it gets run and do some sort of task. Like I shown you a video where I was able to change password. So I leave the link for that video in the description below. You can do check that out. And here for like that same, like you can try to disable the two factor authentication option. Okay. So that is how it actually happens. Okay. So if it's a CSRF, like if you want to try to escalate that to a little bit upper, then you can use this uh, sort of explanation and you can get like disable the two factor authentication. So disabling two factor authentication means like you are able to bypass it to effect. So that is how it is. And uh, trying some null codes like, uh, like I've seen only one report uh, showing this, like he was able to bypass with a null code because like there is no two factor authentication being implemented there. So like uh, that's the reason uh, null codes and sort, sort of stuff. So these are some techniques guys, like uh, first one response manipulation. So you can do that. Like you need to work on that. Okay. Status code manipulations and uh, a code analyzing the code. Okay. And then rate limiting like brute forcing. If there is no proper rate limitation, you can just brute force it and you can get like a good chance. Okay. So if, if it is getting uh, uh, rate limited, then try to use something called as IP, uh, IP rotator sort of applications or tools. So they helps you in the sense like they try to change the source code of uh, what you say, uh, uh, if there is a request every time that is going through. So you can bypass through that if it's possible. And uh, these are some basic techniques guys. Like uh, I curated a lot of uh, reports. Okay. From uh, various sources. So I also show you where I got curated this from. So there is something called as bug bounty reports pentester.land so it is from integrity i guess you can just do like 2fa and you can see there are like so many reports over here like there are so many reports like 38 reports over here so i gone through few of them and uh, like these may be some sort of like chaining so there you can see some sort of chaining like from two-factor authentication to some sort of stuff like that like that and uh, that is how like you can see how much bounties they got earned or sort of stuff so some of them are old and some of them are new so you can go through them okay uh, i covered the basic part okay so this is not the complete way to uh, bypass the two-factor authentication like there are some other ways as well but since this is a beginner friendly video so i shown you something which you can follow enough so that being said guys really thank you watching the video till the end so if you do end up liking this video make sure you like it and do share with your friends who are really interested in these sort of bug bounty and pen testing sort of stuff this is satvik signing off i'll meet you in the next video thank you